Today we're going to be reflecting on the idea of reconciliation. It's a big word, so we're going to be having a think about what it really means and how we can reflect on that as we live out the rest of today. The story of the Bible is full of this theme of reconciliation. The story of the Bible begins in the Garden of Eden with God and mankind living together in perfect harmony in a world that is unbroken and untarnished by all the evil that subsequently comes as the story progresses, as human beings choose for themselves to reject God's way and set themselves up as kings of their own lives. So reconciliation is the process that God is using to fix this broken world and to call people back to himself. Time and again, God reflects in his character, in his actions, and the way that he chooses people to be his representatives and to reconcile them back to himself. God shows his nature as a God who wants to forgive, a God who wants to always seek the well-being of his people and to bring them back to himself. So in this hymn, we're reflecting on this idea of God and sinners are reconciled in Jesus. This amazing part of the story is the idea that the whole reason that God sends Jesus is for his great plan of redemption, to save people, but also to bring them back together, to bring God and all people back together. God doesn't just have a special place in his heart for righteous people or for those that do his commands. That his heart and his longing is for everyone. And this is what Jesus demonstrated in his ministry when he came to share the love that God has for all people and share what difference it can make to all nations, not just to his people of Israel. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, we read this. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. You see, it's Jesus' death that really demonstrates God's wholehearted commitment to reconciliation. That not only does God want humanity to be reunited, he also is willing to send his son. And Jesus' love is so vast and so deep, he's willing to sacrifice his life to bring that reconciliation. Recently, MCF has been running a course called Kintsuki Hope, and the name really intrigued me when I first heard about it and learnt that it comes from a Japanese tradition of restoring broken teapots or crockery or ceramics. That when uh, damage occurs to a tea set or a teapot, if it becomes smashed or damaged in a way that it no longer becomes useful or usable, rather than throwing it away and rather than super gluing it back together as if nothing had ever happened to it, Kintsugi is a process of restoring something that is broken where the cracks and the fractures within it are highlighted with gold powder to make them shine and make them not only distinctive but make them part of its artistic value. This idea really resonated when I was thinking about reconciliation because God isn't talking about getting this world and our relationship with him back to a place as if no sin had ever happened, as if no separation and loss had ever occurred. And that is why the Bible highlights Jesus' death on the cross as something so hugely significant and valuable. God values that great loss and the great pain that Jesus shed on the cross because of what it achieves, which is something even more beautiful. It's true reconciliation. It's people that were lost, people that were enemies of God, who are no longer that way. 
God does not see us that way. And because of Jesus' blood, we are part of his family. And that through his life, and that resurrection power lives in us. So today we have the power of reconciliation, wherever it is that we go and whatever it is that we do, in the relationships that we have in our families, in our workplaces, with our children and partners, with anyone that we know or anyone that we may not want to talk to anymore. The power of reconciliation is a restored relationship, a new power of life that comes through that restored relationship because of Jesus. So I want to challenge us today to be thinking about how we can reconcile ourselves to the people around us. How can we demonstrate the same sacrifice that Jesus had, not to ignore wrongs of the past, but to create something better, the joy of true forgiveness and true life in all its fullness.